Hi all. I'd like to do a series looking at Kotov's candidate move theory and see you know, how we can turn this um, theoretical idea into a dangerous weapon, a practical weapon in our own games. And to start off with this video, I'm going to use the first main position shown in Kotov's book, The Analysis of Variations. Um, now before I start talking about this, I'd like to quote you something which is um, what I would relate to earlier in what he said. It's as though he's divided up the thought processes of a grandmaster into different stages. The first was actually a clarification if the kind of position had occurred before in, in previous games. Um, the second kind of stage was the assessment and it's here which I recognize um, the idea of you know, trying to strategically crush someone in terms of having strategic trump cards, i.e., you know, factors which you have in the position which are superior to the opponent. It's when Kotov um, says um, here that the Grandmaster not only has to solve the basic problem of who stands better, he has to discern the nature of the position down to its smallest details. And now Kotov writes, he will note the presence and comparative value of various open lines. So comparative value. So I think, you know, Kotov is hinting that, you know, you want to see if your lines are better than the opponent's. Then he goes on to say, um, you know, occupy this open file or diagonal, close that one, or neutralize the action of the enemy rooks. So, you know, that is trying to get a strategic trump card in terms of open file activity. And then Kotov goes on to say, he also work out which, you know, important outposts he should occupy with his knights for which outpost he should drive the opponent's not enemy cavalry. So in other words, you know, the strategic trump card there is, you know, in terms of knight outposts, how can you strategically crush the opponent in having better knight outposts? Then Kotov says, it will become clear to him which of, you know, his pawns and those of the opponents are weak and which are strong past pawns. So again, he's like comparing, you know, the elements, you know, to the opponent. And, you know, if we took this, the same notion that he's just applied to the other elements, then obviously there's a hint that, you know, maybe you're trying to get superior pawns to the opponents. You know, you're trying to get past pawns. You're trying to stop the opponent's past pawns. So again, you know, I recognize a strategic trump card idea there, that you're trying to trump the opponent on the imbalances in the position. Um, so at this stage, you know, it's not all about the technical stuff which, um, you know, this machine-like calculation of variations. These are the preliminary stages which Kosov is describing in his introduction. So he goes on now to talk about something even more subtle. He says, in a more subconscious than conscious way, he'll establish where there is co cooperation and harmony between his pieces and likewise for the opponent. So he's actually talking about trumping the opponent strategically in terms of cooperation and harmony. Maybe there's a way of discipline locating the harmony of the opponent's pieces. You know, say, say you had a knight dislocating the opponent, you know, if you had it on d4, you know, if the opponent has to take on d4, you could dislocate the opponent's position, I guess. So, so you know, he's various ways of strategically trump carding the opponent. Um, now is where, you know, I find, you know, Kotov, you know, he, he comes up with this very controversial theory, you know, in, in my view, which um, other grandmasters have been looking at like Nunn and Tisdall. And I've been, you know, reading this book, in particular, Improve Your Chess Now by Tisdall, who takes, you know, quite a critical, you know, outlook on, on Kotov's um, subsequent implied stages of a grandmaster thinking. Um, so basically, it's the assessment here, uh, stage here, which I recognize most. Um, and then, you know, Kotov basically says the grandmaster's thoughts you know, have been based on general ideas and strategic principles. Yes, I recognize that. In particular, you know, how to strategically crush the opponent. I think that's, you know, the foremost um, idea. Um, but now Kotov says, now he will start looking for the best move. He will establish what moves are possible and how they fit in with the plan. And then analyzing the variations. Now, it's, it's in this technical stage which um, I'm, I come... Very uncomfortable with some of the examples, and this is the first example where a master apparently 
you know, you know, a theoretical master, um, had this position with White, and you know, said he he wanted the sacrifice, but which piece? And he he was looking at like, you know, several candidate sacrifices here. So you know, what sacrifices would you consider in this position? Obviously, you know, White's got some dangerous, you know, attacking pieces. This bishop on this diagonal, this rook here, this queen's. Nice, the knight outpost. In fact, um, this is a type of position where the isolated queen pawn is offering a nice outpost for the e5 knight. So, if black can survive the attack, then you know structurally, you know, then white's had it. Um, so white has to make the most out of this attack. So there are various moves which you can concretely um, calculate because they're forcing in nature. And you know maybe you know this this example is 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 kind of where calculation should in theory excel because there are for example you know there's the concrete forcing move rook takes knight or bishop takes pawn or knight takes pawn or knight g4 even attacking the queen or even bishop takes pawn so how would you go about looking at all these forcing moves and what I have an uncomfort with is. The calculation um, of, of candidate moves is best done with computers if it, if it is um, a raw process for any position. Computers are not going to think in any other way. You know, it doesn't matter if the position is completely closed or completely open. Computers, um, like Ribka, will just analyze the position with candidate move theory because they can't verbalize the position. They can't say, Oh, there's a wonderful knight outpost on e5, um, supported by my isolated pawn, and I've got to make the most out of the position before it goes downhill. Computers can't like verbalise the strategic um, trump cards, which um, Kotov was was talking about in that initial stage before coming down to the concrete variations. But anyway, so Kotov says, you know, the master was looking at different candidate moves here, and. Um, so he looked at apparently bishop takes rook's pawn. So this is in the old notation. Apparently bishop takes rook's pawn. The knight takes knight was another possibility. Knight to knight four is another possibility. So these are all forcing moves so far. Um, but knight to knight four has the, pos the idea of knight takes pawn check. And the master apparently said which then? So let's analyze. 